The Pythagorean theorem is a formula used to find a missing side of a right triangle. We have to know two of the sides to find the third one, and it must be a right triangle. Remember that those are triangles with a right or 90 degree angle. The formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we label the sides like this, a, b, and c. C is always the longest side. It is the diagonal line, and it is opposite the right angle. A and B can be either of these other two sides, but I usually let B stand for bottom and put it there. Let's go ahead and try out the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle. We know that one side is three units long, we know that the other side is four units long, but we're missing this longest side. Remember, that is side C. Since that is the one that we're looking for, we'll go ahead and put that back into our formula. Well, that's the side that we're looking for. We do know what A and B are, so we can substitute their values in for the formula. Remember that I put the bottom as B, so four goes in for the B. A is the other side, three in this question. So now we have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. We can go ahead and start to square some of these numbers. Remember that squaring a number is just taking a number and multiplying it times itself. So 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. And we don't know what c is, so we can't square that, so we have to just bring it along. Now we can add 9 plus 16. That gets us to 25 and 25 equals c squared. But I don't want to know what c squared is, I just want to know what c is worth. So I have to get rid of that square symbol. I do that by taking the square root of both sides of the equal sign. Remember, finding the square root of a number is just finding out what number times itself gets us to the number under the square root sign. So what number times itself gets us to 25? Well, that's 5, of course. So 5 equals C. Our missing side is worth 5 units. Here's one for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and work on the problem and resume playing the video when you'd like to see me work out the solution. On this triangle, we're still looking for C, so we have to leave the C squared alone. But we know what A and B are. 6 goes in for the A, and 8 goes in for the b. Now we square our numbers. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. And that all still equals c squared. Now that I do the addition, 36 plus 64, I come up with 100. And 100 equals c squared. But like last time, I have to take the square root to find out what c is worth. And c is worth 10 units in this question. In this example, we're given A and C, but we're being asked to find out how much B is worth. Well, we still use the same formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but now we fill in the different letters that we have. A squared is going to be 9 squared. I'm looking for B in this question, so I have to leave the B alone, but C I can fill in as 15 and square it. Here's where things get a little bit different. If I know A and B, I would square those, add them, and then finish up the problem like before. But this time I know A and C, so I have to do something just a little bit different. I'll still square my numbers first. 9 squared gets me to 81. I have to leave the B squared alone. And C squared, the 15 being squared, gets me to 225. This is where things take a different turn. If I knew A and B, I could add them together. But here I'm trying to find out how much B is worth. So I have to get the B squared by itself. Here's where a little bit of algebra comes in. I have to subtract 81 from both sides, or subtract however much the A squared is worth, so that I can get B squared by itself, and that equals 144 when I do 225 minus 81. Again, we will only do this subtraction if we're looking for either A or B. It's only when we're looking for C that we do the addition step. But I'm still not done on this question because I don't want to know what B squared is worth. I still have to take the square root. 
So when I take the square root of 144, I get that b is equal to 12 units. Now you get to try one on your own where you're looking for either a or b. In this case, we're looking for a. Just like last time, go ahead and pause the video, work the problem out on your own, and resume playing to watch me find the solution. The first step is to substitute in the values that I know. I still don't know what A is worth, so I have to leave that part alone. But B is going to be 16, and C in this question is going to be 20. Now I do the squaring step. 16 squared gets me to 256, while 20 squared gets me to 400. And I still don't know what the A is worth, so I can't square it, so it just has to stay A squared. Now I do the subtraction, 400 minus 256, because this way I can get the a squared by itself and figure out that a squared is equal to 144, which is 400 minus 256. Just like before, do that last step of taking the square root so that a equals 12. One last helpful hint. Don't forget that triangles can be oriented in many different directions. Just remember what we said earlier about A, B, and C being the different sides that they represent. C is always the longest side. It's the diagonal line, and it is opposite the right angle. A and B can really be either of the other two amounts. Just remember which side is C, and you'll be doing just fine. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with others. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos. Thanks for watching.